Hello, and welcome to Building Codes for Basement Finish. This session is on fire blocking. With fire blocking, we're going to talk about its purpose, the approved materials, and the locations that fire blocking is required. If we look at an example of a home, and unfortunately a fire breaks out in the basement, fire blocking is meant to keep that fire from spreading up through the concealed open cavities within the home and turning the home into a chimney that quickly is in flames. Specifically, the IRC states, in combustible construction, fire blocking shall be provided to cut off both vertical and horizontal concealed draft openings and to form an effective barrier between stories and between a top story and the roof space. So the first thing to take note is that this is for combustible construction only. Concrete or steel framed structures would not be required to follow the fire blocking requirements. There are certain materials that are specifically approved for fire blocking. First, you can use two inch nominal lumber or you can use two layers of one inch nominal lumber, except you've got to make sure that it has broken lap joints between each ply. You can also use 22 30 seconds wood structural panel like this OSB or plywood. You can also use 3 quarter inch particle board. Using these board products, you've got to have backed joints. So if the seams between two pieces don't fall over a framing member, they'll need to be backed or doubled up somehow. Half inch gypsum board is an approved fire block, as well as quarter inch cement based mill board typically used behind showers. Bats or blankets of mineral wool or glass fiber insulation is also allowed, but there is rather specific requirements when using insulation that we'll discuss in this video. The IRC states, bats or blankets of mineral wool or glass fiber or other approved materials shall be installed in such a manner as to be securely retained in place. Retaining in place is important if it falls out of the cavity like this, it won't be a very effective fire block. Loose fill insulation has also got some specific words from the IRC. Loose fill insulation material shall not be used as a fire block unless specifically tested in the form and manner intended for use to demonstrate its ability to remain in place and to retard the spread of hot gases. That's a mouthful from the IRC that's basically requiring some specific data from a manufacturer if you're to use loose fill insulation. On the other hand, dense filled insulation like this is not specifically discussed in the IRC but could be approved as an other approved material like it is here where it's installed very packed into the cavity and will be retained in place by the drywall. However, a bird's nest is not typically going to be an other approved material. Cellulose insulation can be used as a fire block, but has also got to be tested very specifically by the manufacturer. Cellulose insulation installed as tested in accordance with ASTM E119 or UL236 for the specific application. Now there are certain locations where fire blocking is going to be required, specifically in a basement finish. But first of all, it's always going to be a concealed location. In a wall like this that is not drywalled on the other side, the cavities are not concealed and fire blocking is not required. The first location we'll look at is in stud walls at 10 foot horizontal intervals. If we were to cover drywall on this side of the wall, then we would have a concealed space and we would not be able to have a horizontal space more than 10 feet in length. In this case, each 2x4 stud at 16 inches on center would break it down to concealed spaces less than 10 feet. However, in this wall, where the, the, the wood framed wall is held off the crooked foundation, there is a cavity behind that's longer than 10 feet and it would need to be fire blocked. Again, here's a photo of another concealed area between a walkout basement wall and a newly framed wall, also to be fire blocked at at least 10 foot intervals. 
Staggered walls like this that are usually larger for sound or insulation reasons also create a cavity behind that must be fire blocked. In this example, we see a piece of OSB installed down the length of the stud and tight to the other studs behind, and this blocks off that 10-foot horizontal distance. Here's another example where OSB is used between the two walls. However, here it's not 2230 seconds as is required. This is only 7 16 OSB and would not be compliant. Sometimes insulation is used for, as a fire block for the 10 foot horizontal rule, as we see here. However, in most interpretations of the IRC provisions, it refers to a bat or blanket and generally would want to see a bat installed down that cavity for this full depth and full thickness. Now in this case we see a foam used behind a stud as an attempt to as a fire block. This foam is not tested or intended for fire blocking as you see here but some are and they could be approved as other approved material. Here's an example of a product called Great Stuff by Dow intended for fire blocking but there are limitations. If we look at the specifications, it's only allowed for gaps up to a half inch. Something to be careful of when using these types of products. Another location for fire blocking is at the tops and bottoms of walls at floor levels. This is basically at the plates of the walls where electrical wires or plumbing pipes are passing through and the space around them would allow the hot gases to pass. Fire blocking foam like this is commonly used as it's also a good air sealant for insulation values. However, tightly packed mineral wool or fiberglass insulation can always also be used around these gaps around these pipes and wires. The final location is at interconnections between vertical and horizontal spaces. In this example, you see a vertical cavity of the wall and a horizontal cavity of the floor. Had this drop soffit not been built, the top plates would have been the fire block. But with the soffit, airflow can now pass from the wall to the floor cavity. One way to fire block this would be to cover this region here. You can see this being done in this photo and in this photo, where the fire blocking is incorporated into the construction of the soffits. Another way to block off this connection would be to put blocks in the walls at this location. This you can see done here on the right side of the photo. However, there is a breach in that fire blocking in this region where the curved concrete wall is behind the framed wall. Insulation was used as an attempt for fire blocking for that problem, but would not be approved by under the IRC provisions. Here's another example where insulation is improperly used to fill a large gap between two walls. And similarly here, at a soffit level, some insulation is folded up. To use insulation in these applications, as a fire block, it would need to be at least 16 inches of vertical height and to fill the cavity completely. You see that done correctly in this photo, where fiberglass is used for a 16 inch depth to completely fill the cavity back to the other wall behind. Sometimes basements get done and fire blocking wasn't done correctly or perhaps it was completed without permit. In this exploratory photo, it was discovered that fire blocking had not been installed with this basement. One way to solve these problems after the fact is with dense filled insulation in the, in the entire cavity. It will also bring the basement up to compliance with energy codes. Here's an example of OSB used at the top plates as a fire block put on after the wall was installed and notched around the studs. Except unfortunately, it's not 2230 seconds OSB, it's 7 16 and would not be compliant. A better way to do this is in this photo where the OSB is installed before the wall is put in place and thus the notching is not required. The OSB is extended all the way back to the sill plate and the fire blocking seals off the entire top of the wall. However, again, this is 7 16 and not 22 30 seconds. This is a common mistake that's made in the field. Fire blocking can be tricky to notice sometimes and it takes a little time to look around a project and make sure that all breaches have been covered. 
In this soffit, built ab above a small and innocent art niche in the corner of a hallway, the curved radius was built with this plywood, and it allows or this OSB, and it allows an air passage from the cavities adjacent through the soffit and up to that top piece. This top piece was used to create the arch form. However, it's also functioning as a fire block. And again, it's not 22, 30 seconds. The final spot for fire blocking requirements are its stairs. Stairs allow passage for people from one floor to the next. And if their construction allows airflow within the concealed cavities of the stairs, it may require fire blocking. My name is Glenn Mathewson and I thank you for learning with me today.